Want to know when, why, and how to use market research? Do you want to find out why people don't buy your products? You want to start a new product, service, or even marketing campaign, but you don't know what your customers want. You'll need help from your customers to answer the questions above. But how will you get this information? Market research is the way to get all the answers you need in this and many other business situations. In this ultimate guide to market research, you'll find the definition, the benefits, the different types of market research, and some examples that will help you understand this type of research. What is research on the market? Market research is a way to gather information about anything you want to know more about so that you can then understand it and use it to make the right decisions. Another, more specific definition could be Market research is a way for companies to collect data in a planned way so they can make better decisions. Still, its real value lies in how all the information gathered is used to learn more about the market consumer. Market research can be done in a number of ways, such as by sending out surveys, talking to a group of people called a sample, having interviews, and other similar things. The main goal of market research is to learn about or study the market for a certain product or service in order to figure out how the audience will react to that product or service. The information gathered from market research can be used to customize marketing and advertising campaigns or find out what features and services consumers want most, if any. Why is it important to study the market? One of the best ways to make customers happy keep them from leaving, and grow your business is to do research. Here are some reasons why market research is important and why every business should think about it. It gives businesses information and opportunities about the value of both existing and new products, which helps them plan and strategize. Customer-centered. It helps figure out what customers want and need. Marketing is focused on the customer, and knowing what the customer wants and needs will help a business come up with the best products or services for them. Remember that following your customer's journey is a great way to learn more about how they feel about your brand. Forecasts. By knowing what customers want, businesses can also plan how much they will make and sell. Market research can also help figure out how much inventory to keep on hand. Advantage over competitors. Comparative studies based on market research are a must if you want to stay ahead of your competitors. Companies can come up with business plans that help them stay ahead of their rivals. When an organization or business wants to know how people buy things or how likely they are to pay a certain price for a product, they can use market research to come to useful conclusions. The following are the types, based on the methods and tools needed. 1. Primary market research a mix of qualitative and quantitative research. In primary market research, organizations or businesses talk to actual customers or hire a third party to do relevant studies to gather information. The data collected can be qualitative data, non-numerical data, or quantitative data, numerical or statistical data. One can get two kinds of information when doing primary market research, exploratory and specific. Exploratory research is open-ended. It looks into a problem by asking open-ended questions in a detailed interview format, usually with a small group of people, also called a sample. Here, the number of people in the sample is limited to 6 to 10 people. On the other hand, specific research is more focused and is used to solve the problems found by exploratory research. As we've already talked about, primary market research is a mix of qualitative and quantitative market research. Qualitative market research studies collect semi-structured or unstructured data using some of the most common methods for qualitative research, such as focus groups. One of the most common ways to do qualitative research is through a focus group. A focus group is a small group of 6 to 10 people who usually answer online surveys. The best thing about a focus group is that you can get information about the group members without having to talk to them in person. This method is more expensive, though, because it is used to gather more complicated information. One-to-one -one interview. As the name suggests, this method involves personal interaction in the form of an interview. The researcher asks a series of questions to the respondents to get information or data from them. Most of the questions are open-ended and are asked to make it easier for people to answer.
This method depends a lot on how good the interviewer is at asking questions that get answers. Ethnographic research is a type of in-depth research that is done where the people being studied live and work. With this method, the interviewer has to adapt to the environment of the people being interviewed, which could be a city or a small village. This kind of research can be hard to do because of where it needs to be done. Research on a culture can take anywhere from a few days to a few years. Organizations use qualitative research methods to do structured market research by using online surveys, questionnaires, and polls to get statistical information that helps them make smart decisions. Pen and paper were once used for this method. Now, this is done by sending structured online surveys to the respondents in order to get insights that can be used. Researchers use modern survey platforms that are focused on technology to structure and design their surveys in a way that will get the most answers from respondents. With a well-structured system, it's easy to collect and report data, and with all the information at hand, the right steps can be taken. 2. Research on the secondary market Secondary research uses information that has already been put together by outside sources, such as government agencies, the media, chambers of commerce, etc. This information is found in newspapers, magazines, books, company websites, free government and non-government agencies, and so on. This is what the secondary source uses. Public sources. A great way to get free information is to use public sources like the library. Most government libraries are free to use, and a researcher can document the information that is available. Commercial sources. Even though commercial sources are reliable, they are expensive. Local newspapers, magazines, journals, and TV are all great places to get information from a business perspective. Institutions of learning. Even though it's not a very common way to get information, universities and other educational institutions are a rich source of information because they have more research projects than any business sector. Most of the time, a market research project can have three different kinds of goals. Administrative. Help a company or business grow by planning, organizing, and keeping track of both human and material resources. This way, the business can meet all of the market's specific needs at the right time. Social. Provide a product or service that customers need to meet their specific needs. When a customer uses the product or service, it should meet their needs and preferences. Economic. Figure out how much money a company can make or lose if it is new to the market or if it is introducing new products or services. This will make sure that all actions can be taken with certainty. Knowing what to do in different situations that come up during the research will save time and make the research go more smoothly. Successful businesses today use powerful market research survey software that lets them do thorough research on a single platform. This helps them get actionable insights much faster and with fewer problems. Here are the steps you need to take to do good market research. Step 1. Describe the issue. When researchers ask questions, it will help if they have a clear idea of what they want to study. These questions should be aimed at finding solutions to problems and should be changed to fit the project. Make sure that the questions are clear and that the people answering them can understand them. Researchers can test the questions with a small group to see if they make sense and are enough to get useful results. Research goals should be written in a clear way and include a short summary of what information is needed and how it will be gathered. Why are we doing the research should be able to be answered. Step number two, what is the sample? For market research, researchers need a sample that is representative of the whole. This sample can be gathered using one of many sampling techniques. A representative sample is a small group of people who show as well as possible what the whole group is like. A group can't waste their time and money by asking the wrong people for information. It's important that the sample chosen is a good representation of the population in terms of the things that matter to the researchers and that they need to look into. Keep in mind that marketers will always have a chance of getting a biased sample because there will always be people who are too busy to fill out the survey or who fill it out only partially, so researchers may not get the data they need. The larger the sample, the more likely it is to be a good representation of the whole population. 
the researcher can be more sure that the people in the sample are the ones they need and may be able to reduce bias with a larger representative sample. So, if they want to make sure our surveys are accurate, they should use samples that are representative and fair. Almost all surveys that are taken seriously use a scientific sampling method that is based on theories of statistics and probability. There are two ways to get a sample that is a good representation. Probability sampling. In probability sampling, the sample is chosen at random, which means that every person in the population has the same chance of being chosen and put in the sample group. Researchers should make sure they have up-to-date information on the population from which they will take their sample, and they should interview the majority of the population to make sure their sample is representative. Non-probability sampling. In non-probability sampling, people from different backgrounds try to get a more balanced and representative sample. Knowing the demographics of our group, like gender, age where they live, etc., will definitely help to narrow down the profile of the desired sample and define the variables that are of interest to the researchers. Before they get the information, researchers can have control over making a representative sample that works well for us if they know these criteria. There can be a margin of error when a sample doesn't show the whole. If researchers want a sample of 100 employees that is a good representation of the whole, they should choose about the same number of men and women. The size of the sample is very important, but that doesn't mean it's always right. Representativeness has more to do with the sampling frame than with size. This is the list of people from which people are chosen, for example, as part of a survey. If researchers want to learn more about how to figure out the size of a sample, they can read our guide on sampling here. Step 3. Get the information you need. First, a tool for collecting data should be made. If they don't answer a survey or only answer part of it, it will lead to mistakes in the research. This won't happen if the right data is collected. Fourth step, look at the results. Each step in the process of market research is connected to the others. If all of these things are done well, but there isn't a good analysis of the results, the decisions that are made won't be right. The best way to find solutions is to do a thorough analysis that doesn't leave any loose ends. A report will show the results of the analysis of the data. The report should also be written clearly, so that good decisions can be made based on it. When you analyze and interpret the results, you try to figure out what they mean in a bigger picture. To get to this point, all the previous steps have built on each other. How can researchers figure out how big or small the results are? Only age, sex, job, and number of interviewees will be quantifiable pieces of information. The rest will be feelings and experiences that the interviewees have shared with us. For this, there is a tool called an empathy map that forces us to put ourselves in the shoes of our customers. The goal is to find the traits that will help us make sure our products or services fit their needs or interests better. When the research has been carefully planned, the hypotheses have been clearly stated, and the correct method of data collection has been used, it is usually easy and successful to do the interpretation. What happens after market research has been done? Step number five, make the report on the research. When presenting the results, researchers should think about what they want to accomplish with the research report and not assume that the structure of the survey is the best way to analyze the data. One of the biggest mistakes that many researchers make is that they present their reports in the same order as their questions and don't see the potential of storytelling. The best analysts say the following is how to write a good report. Follow the inverted pyramid style to show the results, answering the business's most important questions at the beginning. Instead of putting together more and more evidence, start with the conclusions and explain the basics. After that, researchers can give more information to readers who are interested and have time. Step number six, decide what to do. An organization or researcher should never ask, why do market research? They should just do it. Researchers can learn a lot from market research. For example, they can find out what people are planning to buy or how the target market is growing. They can also find useful information that will help them figure out how much to charge for their product or service and find a good middle ground that works for both them and their customers. Make a choice, act, and carry out.